Welcome to RTF Live. This is Matthew Lyle hosting today. It's a little awkward. I'm in the driver's seat today, but as always, joined by Billy Hatton. How you doing today, Billy? Doing all right. Uh, today is payday uh, for all my military people, all my veterans, so this is definitely a good day for me. It could not come at a better time. <laughs> Holiday season here. Uh, B- Billy, let's get it going. How about the, on today's show, how about them Cowboys? It hurts me to say it. They came out. They won 13 to 10 against probably arguably the number one team in the in the NFL, the Saints. What's your takeaway? Are, are, you already had them win the division. Are yeah. they contenders for you? Yeah, I had them win the division. I thought this would be the only game out of their next stretch that they would actually lose. Now it, it, it makes me wonder whether or not they're going to go undefeated on this stretch. I know it probably won't. This is the game I thought that they would slip up. But this is the game. You know, I said on RTL Sports Talk yesterday, um, the the Cowboys' last three wins, Ezekiel Elliott had over at, or at least 120 yards in all three of those wins. You know, that and that Prescott took care of the football, three touchdowns during that span, no interceptions. And, and, and I said yesterday, I could see this game being the game that Dak Prescott have a good game and Zeke or Elliott have a mediocre so-so game. And it kind of went that way. Zeke had a, a t- uh, you know, he had, he did have the receiving touchdown. So uh, he, he didn't, and he, he didn't really do much on the ground. Dak Prescott, they started out hot. That defensive line, which we knew about all, all year long, Demarcus Lawrence, Tyron Crawford, these guys, guys to Drew Brees, they put pressure constantly on them. Uh, and this is the reason why the Saints were going out to get another one, uh, another wide receiver, you know, because Michael Thomas is, is good, but he, it, you know, in this day and age, you need that Robin to your Batman. You know, there's a reason why the, the Texans were playing with Will Fuller and Deshaun Hawkins all, all year. As soon as he go down, they go get Damaris Thomas. You know, it, it, it shows that you're going to need somebody else. The Patriots when when Gronk plays and when he doesn't play. Because he he's getting double teamed, you know. So I like what the Cowboys did yesterday. They they came out aggressive. I heard J- uh, Jason Garrett did a did some speech before the game. Obviously, it worked. Uh, and this just confirms that probably on that list that of coaches that we got coming up later on in the show, Jason Garrett probably won't be on one just because of this win. Yeah, you know, to your point of Batman and Robin, whether you're talking about the comic book movies or you're talking about sports teams in general, it's always been Batman and Robin. But now it's it's the Avengers. It's the Justice League. It's, it's <laughs> Batman, Superman. You don't need just a Robin. You need a Superman and a Flash. So there's a reason that, you know, you see it in the NBA, all these super teams. You see it in the receivers. You know, a lot of people said when they went after Dez, you know, why were they going after Dez? Their offense is fine. They need to touch up that defense. Well, clearly their offense isn't fine because they were only able to muster up 10 points against uh, the Cowboys. Now, to the game last night, um, maybe it's the Patriots fan in me that causes you to lean on history and start looking for explanations regarding the unexplainable. Example, every time the Patriots start 2-2, two and two, I always go digging in my bag of excuses and say, boom, pull out Old Faithful. Every time they start two and two, they find themselves in the Super Bowl. You know, it's something that I lean my head on until I can no longer lean my head on. The, the exact opposite really can be said about the Dallas Cowboys, and maybe it's the quote-unquote hater in me that has me digging into this bag of excuses, but I'm still digging. And I, maybe, like I said, maybe I'm leaning on something, I'm going to fall on my face, but I still see this team being an 8-8 eight and eight team. I think they pulled an upset last night. I can easily see them losing to the Eagles. I can see I can actually see them ironically beating the Colts and then losing to the Buccaneers. And then at the end of the year, if there was we, we talk about are the Giants going to tank or, or not, I could see them wanting nothing more than keeping the Cowboys from the playoffs. So oh, for maybe, sure, yeah. Maybe I, I, I could definitely see all of that. I, I I'm I'm also not sold on the rest of that division. Uh I know you have the Eagles winning that division, and we went over division winners yesterday. Um, so I'm pretty sure your division winner will still be the same. You probably still think yeah, the Eagles not changing gonna, on that one. Yeah, uh, just for me, I, I think the Cowboys are, are rolling, especially now with this win. There's so much excitement in that locker room right now. There's so much like we can do this. Obviously, though, I mean, obviously they they always thought that that they can do it, but now. 
you know, four straight. They just beat a team right. that, that won ten straight. I think now they're going to be riding that high horse just a little bit. I still don't think they're going to be worth anything once they get into the playoffs. But, I, you nonetheless, know, I still think they make it. You know, like I said, and, and this is all coming from a, a spot of, quote, hate. You know, if, if we're going to lose such strong terms and, and we do in the sports world uh, of haters and, and writers and so forth. But I, the, that's the part that scares me, Billy. Let them get in. Let them host a playoff game. They're probably going to be playing the Panthers, Vikings, or Seahawks. They could easily lose that game. But they and I think they win. lose to either one of those teams. They, they, but they could also beat them, Billy, and that's my fear. You know, now obviously I don't think they can win in New Orleans or they can win in L.A., but this is a fan base that they don't need to win a Super Bowl to have their fans go nuts. Make, have them make it to an AFC championship game or win a playoff and compete in a playoff game, and we'll never hear the end of it, Billy. And, and now, that's what kills me with Cowboy fans. You know, now, they, they, they love mediocrity. Get it. Yeah, I'm right there with you, but uh, you know, enough of that debate. I think last night, though, you were going to hear the officiating was bad, and it was equally bad that you were going to hear. So, now I do think that the Saint, if, if a team got quote unquote shafted, it was going to be the Saints because uh, the Cowboys fans were going to go that on one drive there was two big third downs that they got defensive holding, and then on a fourth down, which you can't blame this on the the refs. Uh, Randy Gregory came in and basically just tried to take out the punter's knees. I mean, there, uh-huh. there was no attempt at the ball. It was it, that if that if that would have been about three or in his case about five feet higher, it would have been helmet to helmet because he led with his helmet. Now, if you're the Saints, you got you do got a little bit of a gripe with the refs. Uh, I'm not even going to get onto that play that uh, pass interference call at the end because that's a very subjective call. But Cole Beasley got a first down when his knee was down. You know, a, a yard short of the first down marker. Now, you can blame that on Sean Payton for having no challenges left, but that was a bad call. The the hit on Kamara that potentially – I mean, Jalen Smith's potentially going to get fined or suspended for that one play, but it wasn't able to have an effect on the game. And, you know, I think the, the Saints got the, the short end of that stick. I don't want to buy into the Cowboys stock, but I'm afraid it's a very valuable stock right now, and I don't like that. Yeah, I, I I definitely don't like that as well. I the the Redskins let me down. First off, the the, the Giants let me down, and, and and you was preaching it. You kept saying it. The Giants are are the or the Ryan Fitzpatrick. They let me down, and now I have to believe in the Cowboys, which is the one thing that I that I never want to do. You know that there's three franchises that that takes me to this point, and that's the Cowboys the New York Yankee fans and Laker fans. I hate them all because they all like to live in, in, in the past and they think people are supposed to bow down to them. I, 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 oh, man. You got <laughs> hey, me talking about I, the Cowboys in a good I get way. It. I hate it. Uh, one, one last wrap-up question before we leave the ranks of the NFL. I've often joked with friends and, and colleagues that the Patriots, even though I'm a Patriots fan, you know, the, the saying is, and I can see it, that in 20 years – they're, the Patriots are going to be the new Cowboys. Haven't done anything in 20 years, but the fans are still chirping. My, my argument with that, Billy, and I, I want your little quick opinion on this. My argument with that is Boston's a different city than Dallas. Boston, they're always hanging up banners for something. I mean, Boston, you don't hear them hanging their hat on their history like they do the Lakers fans, you know, because the Red Sox are there. Yeah, the Red Sox obviously haven't won as much as the Yankees, but they've won more recent. And I, I just think in a city that wins all the time, they will find another sport to celebrate if the Patriots fall off. Unlike Dallas, where they've really not won anything other than the Mavericks a couple of years ago. And what's your thoughts on that? Are the Patriots? You know what? Years? That's a really good. That's a really good point. And I don't think Patriot fans would ever do that. Maybe I think Patriot fans because I, I haven't really encountered too many of you guys. I, I, I I've had a few, but the ones that I do uh, know, they're not really all that arrogant. You know, they they they. They state what it is, and, and, and that's it, you know. But it, it's – and to your point, that could be it. Maybe because Boston have so many other celebrated teams, teams that's also good, teams that's also winning. And these other teams are basically – even though New York got a, a ton of teams, the Yankees are the only team that's done anything, you know, recently. Right. You know, the Lakers, at least they can say, well, I guess 2009, 2010 we did win a title. But that, that's almost 10 years ago. But, yeah, I, 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 I think you got a good point there. All these other cities 
haven't really won in any other sport, so the only thing they can hang their hat on is that sport. But uh, <clears throat> the Patriot fans I have encountered, they've been they've been normal fans. Well, and, and to speak as a Patriot fan, I think the only time we get reckless is when you come at Tom Brady. But I think it's because we know that this dynasty is contingent on two things that are very temporary, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, that without them, we are just everyone else, that we know that there's not, we're not so – we're not so naive like Cowboy fans that think it's the city of Dallas, it's Jerry Jones, it's that, it's that stadium, it's America's team. No, we know that the only reason we're good is the man calling plays and then the man executing the plays. You take For one sure. or both of those away – we are, we're probably in the same conversation with the Ravens and Bengals for just mediocrity. But uh, great NFL talk there. Moving on, starting tonight, actually, and then into tomorrow, we have conference championship games in college football, playoffs on the line. Billy, I'm not going to go in order of importance. I'm going to go in order that they are on TV. So if we can spend different times on most, you know, obviously the more uh-huh. prioritized games. First True. off, tonight, 7 o'clock, MAC championship. Northern Illinois versus Buffalo. Who you got? Oh, uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Buffalo, and I and I, I honestly don't even know why. I've, I think I've only seen either of these teams highlights maybe once or twice. Uh, going going for, but uh, I'm gonna go Buffalo, and, and that's probably only just because of Khalil Mack, honestly, because I don't think either one of these teams are going to be worth much. But Buffalo, I. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe uh, Khalil Mack's brother is actually on that team. Yes. Um, so I'm with you, Billy, and, and don't sleep. I'm going to go with Buffalo only because I, it's just a flip of a coin. I, I, and don't, but don't sleep on this game. These MAC championship games, if you like offense, tune into this. These tend and, to be 55 and, to 54. And just one quick point, Matthew. Florida State did beat Northern Illinois in the second game of the year. So any team that Florida State beat, I definitely can't can't <laughs> consider you to be a winner. Fair enough. Hey, fair enough. I, I I can't argue with that point. I did not know that. Thanks for that tidbit, Billy. Yeah, that that makes me want to go with Buffalo even more. But I think this is going to be an exciting game. I think this is the nice seven o'clock game. You get home from work. You're getting ready. It's a Friday night. Maybe the it's probably going to be chilly depending on where you live. Maybe you and the wife just want to order up some pizza. So on TV, not really paying attention. Got your cell phone in one hand, got your food in the other. Keep up with not the really kids. paying attention. <laughs> but looking, but but then at, at around nine o'clock, saying, "Oh crap, we're going to overtime," and then find yourself in a four overtime battle. The game that this could be. Moving on a little later, if let's be realistic, probably the real game you're going to watch if you watch college football tonight. It's a Friday night eight o'clock game on Fox. No playoff implications. Pac-12 championship. Utah versus Washington. Who you got? I'm gonna go Washington. I, I I think Jake Browning know how vital this 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 game and the next one is going to be uh, as far as his NFL journey. A guy that most people thought was going to come out and tear it up this year, being a senior, played in that offense for for as long as he has, has been in college football for as long as he has. Uh, I'm gonna go the the better, the more the the experienced team, the team that got the the, the better quarterback. In my estimation, they got that running game going last week. So for me, I'm going to go Washington, uh, Washington and uh, Jake Browning. I'm right there with you. You know, Washington's one of those teams that always tend to have a number in front of their name, but they can't win the big one. In my opinion, this isn't the big one. This is just a winnable game that will help their program. Give me Washington. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that one. All right, wake up Saturday morning, December 1st. Welcome to the 12th month of the year. 2018 is almost over. We're going to start off with a noon kickoff. It's going to be a good one. Pat, Big 12, Oklahoma, Texas, who you got? I got Oklahoma. I got them going into the college football playoffs, and they don't get into the college football playoffs unless they win this game right here. Uh, they did lose the first one, you know, in the Red River rivalry against Texas. And Texas is a really uh, really good football team. Ellinger and um, – the uh, what's the head coach name? I can't even remember the guy that came from Houston. For some reason, it's slipping my mind right now. Uh, uh, Tom Herman. Tom Herman. He will be ready. He will have this team ready. He he knows what's at stake here. He knows that they probably don't have a chance of getting into the college football playoff because they're so far back. But this could be a New Year's Six bowl for them right here if they if they win this game. I don't think it happened. I think Colin Murray is is going to be electric. Uh, He's my Heisman. Whether or not he's going to win it, I doubt it. I think Tua 
will will win that. But uh, I, Kyler Murray right now is, is is my Heisman. That defense is going to have to get better because Texas will put up some points against this defense. But I have no words when you have an offense that can put up points at any time from anywhere on the field. Give me Kyler Murray in Oklahoma. You know, you you brought up the Red River rivalry, and that is a, a mouthful. You brought up the Red River rivalry, and I, I'm going to harken back to that. If Oklahoma had won that, especially if they had won it easily, I would say watch out for Texas. But they lost to Texas. They got caught on the chin. Oklahoma got caught off guard, didn't, thought they were untouchable. Like you said, Kyler Murray had been looking great, thought they were untouchable, took a loss. I think that prevents that from happening again. I do think that this is going to be a very high-scoring game. Everything in the Big 12 is. But if you don't have a defense, if you don't have a defense, the second best thing to have is a very potent offense. Because what that does is that tells the other team, we have to score every time. That makes them desperate. A desperate offense can sometimes be sporadic and and be turnover-prone, which then makes a bad defense look like a good defense. So give me Oklahoma in this. I think Lincoln Riley gets it done. That Texas caught them off guard once. I don't think they catch them off guard again. And, and, and I will also say this just for Oklahoma's sake, because Texas know Todd Herman and, and the guys, they know what's at stake for Oklahoma if they win this game. They know Oklahoma wins this, they go into the SEC, I mean, they go into the, to the college football playoff. So I would definitely expect to see some triple reverse passes, some double reverses. I, you, you're going to see some, some trickeration in, in this game because technically, essentially, Texas really isn't playing for anything. Yeah, they could possibly get that 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 New York Six uh, bowl bid, but technically they're they're really just playing for a normal bowl game. So if I'm Oklahoma, I'm I'm definitely paying attention and I'm telling my defense, do your job. Don't worry about doing anybody else's job. You do your job and we'll win this game. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, that could definitely be uh, something. You know, we talked about the Giants pulling the Cowboys' dreams, but moving on here to a very small one. I expect this to be pretty quick. Uh, Louisiana University, previously known as Louisiana Lafayette, I'm pr- I heard that they hate that, taking on Appalachian State in the Sun Belt uh, Conference Championship. Who you got? I got Appalachian State. This is one of the the the, the, the teams that's always seem to have some some quick guys. Seem to always have some fast guys. They seem to always be right up here around that nine and two, ten and one uh, uh, mark. And Louisiana Lafayette or whatever they are, the Raging Cajuns, I think that's who they are. Um, that is correct. They, they've been mediocre. They, they, they're just a mediocre team. They, they get lost in the shuffle of the Louisiana team. So give me Appalachian State. I agree. I think Appalachian State's by far the better team. They took Penn State to overtime at a very early stage in the season. Uh, they're, they're a solid team. Historically, at that level, they've been a good team. The only thing that could potentially catch them off guard and I don't know how much of a factor it'll have, is since, Brian, since Jeff Brom turned down the Louisville job, Appalachian State's coach is the next man up poten- potentially for that job. If he takes it early and doesn't coach the bowl game, that could have a small impact, but I don't see it being much. Give me Appalachian State. Let me Moving ask you on. a quick question before we move on. Do you okay. see uh, – this would be a quick answer anyways. Do you see Appalachian State or UCF getting into the college football playoffs first? Which one? <sighs> I'm going to go UCF only because if, if we're going to rank those group of five conference outside of the power – or uh, is group of five or group of six – outside the power five, Conference USA is definitely more important than the Sun Belt. It would take Appalachian State four, five, six seasons of undefeated and pulling off the Penn State gigs and beating some other power teams to get in there, in my opinion. I agree, but I think Appalachian State is on the start – with the yeah. level of opponents that they that they um that they schedule, so that's why I just thought it'd be interesting. No, and, but- I, I think UCF as well because I think yeah the um you know their conference is, is the athletic conference is more you know is more yeah. challenging. But yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I'm gonna spoke on that. They're not in the uh, conference USA. They are in the athletic conference. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. AAC, I know what you meant. I which, know what you which meant. is even more, even though it's not a big conference, it is a, probably the biggest of the group of five conferences. And they got some well-known teams in that division as well. Exactly. So at 1.30 on CBS Sports Network, you got Conference USA Championship, Middle Tennessee taking on UAB. Who do you got? I got, uh, I got UAB. You know, this is their first year back uh, with their program. Their program got suspended, uh, you know, a few years ago. 
and and now look what they're doing. There's some athletes in the South. Yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm always I always say that to people. Like I think the best athletes come from the South. Uh, and although both of these teams in the South, we're talking about the Deep South in Alabama. They they have some really good players that just probably didn't have the grace to go to Alabama. That just didn't probably have the grace to go to Auburn. Give me UAB um, winning this game. Yeah, you know, I, I want to go there, Billy. My heart does because UAB is a great story. They cut the program. The last year they were here, they had a good year. They, they were gone for a year. Now they're back. They're still competing. I love it. But the, the one that I've seen the most is Middle Tennessee State. And when I look at them, they played Kentucky really good. They have a quarterback. That's, his dad's the head coach. He's been, he's been a starter for four years. He, he was actually the ball boy in his first season, in his dad's first season in 2007 when he was like 10 years old. This, if there's anybody in college football that knows a playbook, I'm going to imagine it's this kid. So I, I want to go UAB. That's where my heart says that'd be a great story. But I'm going to go Middle Tennessee State on this one. Yeah, I'll probably pick more hard over, overhead. Um, that, that Middle Tennessee definitely could, could, could win this game. All right, moving on back to the we we call talk about the AAC three thirty on ABC UCF undefeated without their quarterback versus Memphis. Who you got? I think I think UCF gets it done. I, I just I, I don't I don't think Memphis will have enough. They they they're a decent football team, you know, and 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 their quarterback is having a, a pretty good year. I think he's completing somewhere about sixty some percent of his passes. But I, I'm looking for UCF to rally here. And I'm looking for UCF to rally only because their their hope says Georgia, Ohio State, and Oklahoma all lose, and, and the committee favors them over Michigan. You know, so I'm picking UCF. I, I can see that, but I, I think you can tell yourself that, but you know that that's not the case. Yeah, it's, you know, it's highly possible. Texas beating Oklahoma is about 50-50, 60-40 maybe, or 40-60, I guess. But – um. Alabama losing to Georgia is even less, and I would say Ohio State losing to Northern and Northeastern is, is even – or Northwestern is even less than that. So, I think w- when you see in college sports or in any sports in general, when you see a team have their dreams shattered, you tend to you tend to just go out and lay an egg. You saw I saw it with my Kentucky Wildcats when the SEC bubble burst. They, they went out and lost to Tennessee. You see, it, you see it time after time. This is actually a good American rivalry in that conference. I'm actually going to take Memphis with the upset. Yeah? I am. I am. I just think – I think having Milton go down – This is that game. Yeah, this is that game. Having Milton go down, the, the emotion's just going to be so raw. I think, I think they just lose this one here. Uh, so, going on, 4 o'clock, probably the biggest game of it. One versus – you got I got Alabama. You know, we we talked all year long on, on, on this topic, and you know, we both said Bama is the best team in in the country, and I, we don't think it's close. You know, you even went to the to the point of saying if they lose today, or I mean on Saturday tomorrow, they should still get in. Uh, I'm not quite on that train, but I, I don't think it happens anyways. I, Alabama is good. They have the Heisman. On their team, I do believe the 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 uh, they will vote for tour. Those backs that they got, uh, what's his name? Number eight. Um, he plays running yeah, back. Isn't and it? Split him out. I want to say it's uh, Jacobs. Jacob, ja- yeah, Jacobs. Man, listen, this kid is amazing. Jared Judy. I mean, come on, man. He's he's one of the best receivers in, in, in all of college football. And we're talking about a guy coming from the SEC. Uh, give me Alabama, and I. Honestly, uh, Matthew, I, I don't think it's going to be close today. You know, I don't either. I think Alabama, when when the TV eyes are on them, when it's time for them to prove something, I think Alabama gets it done. I'm going to go – I do think they have such A1 credit with the committee that they could lose here and still squeak into that fourth. And I think that's what you, why you've seen – I think you see a lot of people agree with you, man. I think the, you know a lot of people agree. I think the reason you've seen Georgia slide up there in that four is I talked about it. I talked about the committee grooming our minds to be okay with something because we've seen it enough times. So you have so you have one and four Georgia versus Alabama. A that that's going to sell tickets. One versus four just sounds better than one versus five or one versus six. And then if if, if they lose, then you can say oh they lost to the fourth team. So then you you got to let of number four seed Georgia in. They're already in. Alabama goes from number one. I think 
I think what you would see is Georgia would move to number two and Alabama would fall to number four. But I think that's all just chit-chat right now because I don't think Alabama is going to lose this one. Give me Bama, and, and, and I don't like you said, Billy, I don't think it's going to be close. Yeah, we talked about this yesterday on RTS Sports Talk. And as soon as the, as soon as the rankings came out on, on, on Tuesday, I immediately thought about what you said. It, immediately. As soon, soon as I seen Georgia at number four and not Oklahoma, I said, they are trying to do what Matthew said. Because if Alabama loses this game, they can say, well, they lost to the number four yeah, team. Not bad you know, at all. They didn't have to beat the number 14 team like, uh, you know, Oklahoma and Texas. They can say they lost to the number four team. They've been the best team all year. They're going to move in. And at that point, I will also think that they will probably move Clemson up to number two and Georgia at number three. But they're going to have that, that, that Alabama-Georgia matchup. Oh, that, I- that's what they want. Absolutely, and the fact that Michigan lost, now that, that heated debate me and you got into about would they leave an undefeated Notre Dame out, that's not even a problem because if Georgia beats Alabama, now you're not picking a one-loss Alabama over an undefeated Clemson or undefeated Notre Dame or even an undefeated Michigan that probably beat an Ohio State. You're picking, you're picking them over a one-loss Oklahoma that lost to Texas and then beat a, a lowly ranked te- or lower-ranked Texas team and an Ohio State team that lost to Purdue. That's all the committee has to By kick 29. Their, right. That's all the committee has to kick their feet back and say now to get that two team SEC. I don't think it's going to be an issue. I don't think it's going to happen. Now, as a Kentucky fan, I want it to happen because that means LSU goes to the Sugar Bowl, Florida goes to the Fiesta Bowl, and then you got lovely Kentucky sitting right there at the Peach Bowl. I don't think, but I, I, but I don't think they could beat Bama. So I mean, at the end of the day, all these are, are fun potentials, but I think Alabama takes care of business and, and they just win. Yeah, Alabama is the best team. Prime time, it seemed like, you know, who else got – who else is this clutch, you know, when right. the lights are on? Right. Then Alabama. It, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. They're actually more apt to lose when you're not paying attention than they are exactly. when you're watching. Exactly. Exactly. So, moving on here real quick. Mountain West, really good matchup. Fresno State at Boise State. Who you got? Uh, I, got I, I got Boise State. You know, Boise State seen is one of those teams – that's always there. You mentioned uh, about Washington. It seemed like it's one of those teams that always have a number in front of their name. And to me, that's Boise State. And then they have a quarterback, as always, that's slinging it around. That's, 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 that's doing what Boise State quarterbacks do. Running back has 16 touchdowns this year. You know, give me Boise State uh, by, by, by a touchdown, 10 points. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. Because from my understanding, this is one of those conference championship games that don't have a neutral site. You go to the better team, and that better team, it's, it cares to be Boise. I watched this game a couple weeks ago. Fresno State was actually high, ranked higher than Boise. Boise got it done. I, I don't see any reason Boise doesn't get it done this time. Yeah, for sure. Moving on to the Big Ten game, we got Ohio State versus Northwestern. Who you got? I got Ohio State, but I don't think that this game is going to be – a blowout like a lot of people think it is. Northwestern has played some really good teams this year, uh, and they have played those really good good teams really, really tough. You know, they, they, they beat a Wisconsin team. They only lost by 10 against a Notre Dame team that's undefeated. And that game was, was, was really, really close. Notre Dame made some big plays, and, and, and that's why they got out of there with the win. They, they beat Michigan State. They, they only lost to Michigan by three points. So this team has played some, some, some tough teams uh, really well. They beat the, the, the Purdue team that, that Ohio State lost to. So I got Ohio State, but this game is going to be really close. I, I'm right there with you. I'm not so much on the closeness. Look, I, yes, I laugh that they lost to 29, but they lost to a, a pretty solid Purdue team on a very emotional and electric night. Living here in Louisville, I hear Jeff Brum talk, and, and that's going to be one of those things. That's going to be one of those games that that university remembers forever. Uh, Ohio State, on the other hand, they remind me of that kid in college who roll into their senior year thinking graduation's fitting to be a breeze. They stumble early on in the semester, miss a test. Now they're in, in poor graces, and now they spend the last three weeks of the semester cramming everything and trying to pass. I think they look really good tonight. I think they get it done very easily. I just don't think it's going to be enough, and, and they find themselves. And, and don't get me wrong; it'll be a, a decent bowl game, but they're not. They're going to win by thirty or forty, but it's not going to be enough. Yeah, I think I think they get left out as well. They, the odd man looking out, them in the Pac-12. Right, right. 
Uh, last game, ACC championship game, or yeah, Clemson, Pittsburgh. Who you got? I got I got Clemson, and this game I think is going to be a blowout. I, I think Trevor 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 Lawrence shows out. Travis Etienne, Wilkins, and all that 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 that, that defensive front. You know, where all those guys are going to be first round picks. Uh, Brent Venables, I, I listen that he's going to he's going to send so much pressure tonight. Dabo Sweeney is already mad because the rumors was, you know, that he was going to be leaving Clemson because people were mad that he didn't beat South Carolina better than what they beat him. That Clemson team is going to be upset. They're going to they're going to be looking to roll uh, going into into the into the playoffs because they know their spot is locked. I, I think Clemson did. Yeah. Give me Clemson. I will say, though, to your point that you brought up with Ohio State. If there was any team that was going to get caught sleeping, the team of the teams that are going to make the playoffs or are in the playoffs running, this is the only team that's pretty much guaranteed a lock in as long as they win. They're playing a team that they really don't have any respect for, and a team in a game that they're definitely going to overlook. The only thing I'll say is Pittsburgh isn't that good. So, yes, Clemson's going to win, and they're probably going to win by a lot. But I think this has the making to be that upset game. What's going to happen is Pitt's going to come out there and play it early, play it close early, only to have Clemson say, oh, wait, yeah, we could lose this game, and then open it up in the second half and win by 30. Yeah, Pitt's, and it's going, to be a, it is going to be a pro-Clemson crowd. Yeah. It's going to, you know, the ACC is in North Carolina, so, you know, that South Carolina trip shouldn't be right. too, too far. And Pitt's got to come from all the way up in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Pitt just doesn't have the, the weapons on that. So that wraps up uh, our our uh, conference championship picks. So I'm going to come as we wrap up the show, Billy. I'm going to hit you with a couple quick questions and, and a little uh-huh. quick discussion. I, I thought of the perfect. Now this is the way I would do it, but I thought of the perfect answer to the college football playoffs. I'm going to hit it for you. What's your thoughts on it? I, we've, we've talked about eight, your five Power Five conference championship games, and your three wild cards or or at large bids. I guess is more college term. But get rid of division. If, if tonight's ACC championship game, which ACC is not real strong, but if it was Clemson versus the second best team in the entire ACC, it'd be a better game. If it was, Big Ten, if it was Ohio State-Michigan rematch for the Big Ten championship, it'd be a better game. The Big 12's got it right. Their, their top two teams are playing. The SEC lucked out, and their top two teams are playing. But if you change those and you got rid of divisions, so essentially – you you have the conference championship now becomes a round in the playoffs. Does that is that the perfect answer, or as close to the perfect answer as you can get in college football playoffs? I think so. You know, we had this conversation uh, the other day when, when when we were when we were talking about the SEC uh, when, when when we had this conversation, and that's what I was uh, saying then. If, if we just get rid of the rankings, we just get rid of everything, uh, and, and now to your point, get rid of the divisions. Let's just get the best teams out there. I agree with that, you know, uh, because me, that way, if you're good, then you're good. We're going to see if you're good or not. We we don't have to, we we don't have to hear no talking. We're going to see if you're good. Uh, So, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's almost perfect scenario. Because it it bums me out seeing, uh, now Clemson's good and they're probably by far the best team in the ACC, but they're playing a seven and five team. And I know the ACC is down, but there's got to be a better team than seven and five, just not in that other division. So I, I think that'd be the best answer. Moving on real quick. Yeah. I'm sorry, Billy. Last point. No, no, no. Go ahead. Okay. You mentioned NFL. We'll talk NFL when, when that season's over. College job of the potential jobs. I know that all the shoes haven't dropped yet, but of the potential co- vacant college jobs, if you were a prestigious or, or a, a decent college football head coach, which one would interest you? Who? Um, who? Give me, give me, give me a, give me a few that's that's run down. Okay, let's just say, and, and I, even though I think Willie Taggart could be on the chopping block for his job, because I know you're such a Florida State fan, I'm gonna leave that off because I think that makes that an easy answer. Let's say you got Georgia Tech, Louisville, Texas Tech, and. I'm trying to think of some other guys that might end up so, losing their job. And Auburn. Let's say that's your options. You got Auburn, Texas Tech, Georgia Tech, Louisville. 
my my heart would probably tell me to go to Auburn because the 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 quality of talent that you would get down there. But I'm gonna go to the school that we talked about in the uh in the chat the other day, and that's Georgia Tech. You know, uh, with with Paul Johnson and Georgia Tech doing their thing. If you can go down there and recruit those guys in that Atlanta area, where so much talent is at, I'm telling you right now, you can turn you can turn Georgia Tech in, in, into a, a real powerhouse. You know, I, I'm glad you said that because that was going to be my answer. I mean, even if you incorporate some other schools, I'm not thinking of. The fact that, and we just talked about it, until they get rid of those divisions, Georgia, Te- Georgia Tech's in that other division that is always not contending, whether it be Louisville, Florida State, Miami, Clemson. Uh, actually, I think Miami might be in that one, but uh, uh, scratch that thought. But Georgia Tech has a, ch- has a chance. You talked about it. Being there in Atlanta, being there in the South, recruiting is going to be an option. Now, we talked about the troubles you might run trying to convert them from the triple option to the spread. But the talent's going to be there. You know, it's much easier to, to recruit fast, athletic, big playmakers than it is to get, you know, the disciplined, simple thought process, buying in to the triple option, understanding, learning it. I mean, it's, yep. much, it's much easier to find a T.Y. Hilton like Florida International did and, and making something happen out of that. So I'm right there with you. That division is also very winnable. You now start getting your team into conference championship. The recruiting comes up. Now you get a chance to compete with the likes of those other powerhouse teams. Because they're not really in a tough. Uh, they're, they're not in a tough division. They're not at all in that conference. You know, uh, they're in the coastal. You know, right. yeah, they're and- not in the Florida State Clemson uh, realm. They in the the Duke, the Miami, the Virginia Tech. Exactly. North that, Carolina. That conference yeah. Is, yeah, that game, that com- that division is very, very winnable. Just so said it. Georgia Took, Tech is tough. Pittsburgh won that division with a 7-5 and five record. Last question here. This is a question that I really always like talking about. I think it, if you really, if you get a chance to think about it, Billy, you'll be on the same side as me. Let's say, what do you think would be easier to win a national championship for the opposite powerhouse? Kentucky, Kansas, and football? Or Alabama, Oklahoma, and basketball. Uh, so we said Kentucky, Kansas football. Yeah. So if you were, a, um, let's say, let's say, me and you were coaches, and you uh-huh. could take over a basketball powerhouse in football, Kentucky, Kansas, North Carolina, Duke, or you could take over a football powerhouse in basketball, Alabama, <laughs> Texas, Florida State. Uh, probably basketball, and only because I think in basketball you don't need as many players. You know, uh, you 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 uh, if you get one of two players in uh in, in college basketball, you can you can run the table. You just get you some nice little pieces around. So for me, if if I had a choice, I will go a football powerhouse uh school. Just basketball is easier, you know. It, it, it's so much easier. I mean, absolutely. I'm glad you're on that same point. It's not much of a discussion. You're absolutely right, Billy. Because, and you've seen it last year, Avery Johnson came into Alabama and in the second year had him ranked in the top ten, got Colin Sexton, got uh, the, the petty kid, and, and now they're making a run. You know, Mark Stoops finally got Kentucky football into a, a playoff consideration at least early on, but that took five years. And even then, he's still going to finish – Probably not even in the top 15, maybe 13, 14 if some other teams lose. But, yeah, absolutely. You Agreed. Know, if you take – if you – you know, you're a Florida State fan. If you were to go to Florida State, and this is, it doesn't sound as impressive now because they're a pretty solid team, but if you took a horrible Florida State team and you get two five-star recruits, one and dones, you're right there. Boom, you're, you're yeah. ready. And, and those people in Tallahassee, man, they were mad because, you know, the football team was always successful and nobody was coming to the basketball games. And they were considering, you know, uh, firing Leonard Hamilton. And you, at, at first, Florida State didn't even have a stadium, you know. The no. basketball team played downtown at the Civic Center. Uh, so they had to drive away from the school just to get to the to the arena. Now they, they, they actually, you know, bought the, the building. But, yeah, and now people are, are happy now. So, right. yeah, I definitely yeah. agree. Absolutely. All right, guys, that is the end of the show. We went a little over, but that's to be expected when I'm at the wheel. I'm, 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 I'm a show robber when I'm on the show. Lord forbid when I'm hosting it, I'm just going to pull topics that I always love to talk about. Billy, thanks for, thanks for another great discussion. Do you have a rant that you want to take us out on? 
Oh, uh, no, I didn't even think of a rant today, honestly. I, w- I would just uh, leave you with this, uh, Matthew, because this would be a good a good topic to take us out of here. Okay. And then we'll end, we'll end uh, on you. But I'm going I'm, I'm to say something that I said to Mike the other day. Zion Williamson, some, he's going to fool somebody into, into making him a number one pick. They're going to pick him one because of the hype, because of the, you know, the flash and all that other stuff. But that game the other night when they played against Indiana, he had 25 points, 22 points in the paint. The other three points was at the free throw line. When he gets in there, he's going to fool somebody to get him in it to take him number one. He's going to get in the NBA, and he's going to have a hard time because he ain't going to have no jumper. And they're going to give him the Popovich treatment that he, that, uh, that he gave LeBron. Just sag off of him. Let him shoot the jumper. And, and and don't let and, and don't get beat in the paint. You know, I I, I agree with you hundred percent. I think in five years, uh, when after this draft happens, you're going to see RG Barrett is by far the best person, or or maybe somebody you don't even know of. But I do the more that Indiana game. I know we talked about it before. I easily see him going number one because let's face it, unless Boston somehow stumbles into that number one pick, you're taking him because you need to sell tickets and. A six foot seven guy kissing the rim sells tickets, and and I think you're gonna like you said someone's gonna take it just because, not what he does in October to April, but from June to October when your team's horrible and you're the Atlanta Hawks or you're whatever team and you got that number one pick, you got to sell hype and you got to sell season tickets. So Zion Williams, in my opinion, is gonna do that better than RG Barrett. RG Barrett's gonna be the better player. But Zion's going to be the guy that in the fall, in the summer, when you're trying to drum up, because just imagine what he's going to do in the summer league. He, he's just going to wreck everybody, and there's going to be so much hype around his team that's not going to be lived up to. But that's what I think is going to happen, Billy. Uh, I definitely agree. Make sure you guys catch us on Sunday, 9:45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. There you go, Billy. Plug us. Standard Time. Um, uh, <laughs> Plug us, Matthew. Billy. Hey, man. All right, man. Good talk, man. Absolutely. <laughs> catch you Sunday. All right.